I'm Heather Vale, and today we've got a panel discussion about online advertising fraud and the state of the industry, some changes that have been going on. My guests today are Todd Crawford, co-founder and VP of Strategic Initiatives at Impact Radius, and David Sendroff, founder and CEO of Forensic. Hey guys, welcome. Thanks, Heather. Yeah, good to be here. Yeah, thanks for being here. So, you guys have some news. What has changed in the world of Impact Radius and Forensic? Well, I guess I'll start. Uh, yeah, we, we, uh, we've known each other, our respective companies and, and ourselves, David and I, and, and other people in, the, in our respective companies for many years. And it just kind of came about that we, we acquired Forensic uh, earlier this month. And um, it's a really good fit, and we're super excited. Um, they're both culturally and, of course, from a technology standpoint just a great a great fit with us we're super excited on this end as well um, you know we've uh, it's been six years we've we've uh, really expanded the business quite a lot uh, you know initially in, in the affiliate world and and uh, and then expanded into display uh, ad fraud and, and viewability in some other areas and um, you know we came to a point that we saw uh, we could either go out to raise capital or, or really look for a strategic partner to to uh, to join forces with, and you know, we've been really impressed with the track record of Impact Radius, and uh, have uh, you know been a strong partner along the way. So uh, you know, we we think now uh, there's there's a, a great path forward with uh, the combined um, offering. Okay, so what do you guys bring? To the table as a team that you couldn't offer individually. Yeah, great question. So uh, traditionally, uh, forensic has has really uh, focused on the, the, the quality of of traffic, and um, you know I, I think that there's uh, there's power really in understanding more about your campaign. So. Uh, you know, Todd can speak, you know, deeper about the, the Impact Radius offering, but the, the idea is that we've created, uh, or the, the combined solution is, is a system of record that allows you to run your entire business on a singular platform, and Forensic focuses on the integrity, intent and integrity of, of impressions, clicks, and conversions. So we can become a wrapper around the, the whole platform to make sure that if you're, for instance, looking at attribution, that there's integrity with that data. It's not a bot or, or non-human traffic that would fool your algorithms uh, into thinking that traffic is, uh, is providing value. Um, and, and so with, with all the games played in, in the industry, now there's uh, you know, a, a platform that that's, uh, has integrity behind uh, all, all the data points. And just just to add to that, you know, if you think about the separated impact radius is literally helping advertisers and agencies track all of their marketing spend, uh, get kind of real uh, apples to apples data. So we are the system of record. We're counting the impressions, the clicks, the conversions. So you're not getting disparate data from third party systems. And then um, we also provide the attribution modeling around that. So uh, now you're you're looking at really the value and of your cross-channel interactions and, and marketing spend. And then what Forensic does is basically says, well, you know, we can tell you which is really good traffic and which is questionable or fraudulent traffic. And so having that together makes a marketer so much more smarter. I mean, first of all, to know that you bought fraudulent ad traffic, whether it's impressions or, or clicks, is eye-opening. And certainly you don't want that in your data that you're analyzing. but the, to take it a, ne a step further, working with Forensic, you can prevent those buys from ever happening so that you, you, you're you spending the dollars on real uh, uh, customers or potential customers. Okay, so is this an exclusive partnership or can someone still use Forensic with a different marketing platform? Yeah, so there's, you know, I, I think um, both, both of us are, are really open platforms, right? And so we really want to be able to hook into the, the ecosystem in, in every way possible. 
uh, and and so there's we've got plenty of clients on all different types of platforms, or, or using their own or their own proprietary platforms, and you know we can hook in 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 every which way. Uh, it's just also if if you're wanting to if you're using Impact Radius, um, you, you can get us integrated within the platform as well. Okay. So how prevalent is online advertising fraud? Great question. Uh, you know, there's different statistics thrown around in ad fraud, which is not just specific to uh, to. I mean, it's a it's broader, right? It's it's uh, the the entire display uh, ecosystem. There's around eight billion dollars a year uh, lost through ad fraud. Uh, now, in in uh, in affiliate, we we don't have the specific numbers, but um, you know, it's it's still quite significant. So what does this fraud look like? What exactly are people doing that's fraudulent? Good question. So it, it really depends on the type of campaign that, uh, that you're running. So in, uh, at the bottom of the funnel, looking at conversion fraud, there's recycled information. Someone captures John Smith's name, phone number, and information, and they're taking that info and submitting it five or ten times, perhaps, uh, to to recycle that information, in in cost per sale campaigns, they're they're able to fool attribution through cookie stuffing, for instance, and and so they may steal the credit for organic conversions by forcing a click in the background where it was either organic or another affiliate perhaps had driven that user in the last minute. They're they're able to either hijack redirects or force these these clicks in the background which uh, triggers a cookie that um, that attributes the sale to the, to the wrong person so those are a couple of examples and then as you move toward the top of the funnel there's other sorts of display fraud happening through bots proxies high risk data centers uh, and that could happen through malware so if if your computer happens to get infected with malware then your your device could be surfing in the backgrounds and contributing to a botnet where it's visiting pages you're not necessarily seeing it on your screen and uh, but but uh, it's surfing you know, many different ads clicking on ads you know creating different actions there and now we're doing quite a lot in the mobile space where uh, we we uncovered something called mobile device hijacking it sounds pretty scary yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. So uh, you know, the idea is you you install an app, and in the background of the app, well, in the foreground you may see one ad, but in the background there may be five or ten different ads showing up, and uh, we were able to expose that through virtualizing this this mobile environment. You can see it on on our website, and it was covered in a number of publications. But uh, as this is running in the background, they're able to to display ads, click on ads, it's burning through your bandwidth, a couple gigs a day uh, that that's being wasted, and uh, and you know we, we estimate about a billion dollars being lost just through this one type of of mobile fraud. David, how exactly does forensic detect fraud and stop it from happening? Sure, great question. Um, so we use both deterministic and probabilistic methods. So in other words. Uh, we may look at browser characteristics that uh, various anomalies we're recognizing that that either bots or bad actors are using, where they may be spoofing browser characteristics or uh, different different anomalies we can recognize through JavaScript capabilities. And then the probabilistic methods are uh, when when we're able to load all this data. Uh, and, and and we look at trillions of actions per month, you know, all through different uh, bid stream data and through conversion data. We load all this data into a data warehouse, and we've got data scientists looking for different patterns and creating algorithms that will flag uh, certain patterns over that are time based, and so we can look back uh, and at, and recognize these these uh, other other types of patterns. And all of these build uh, a probabilistic or a risk score, 0 to 100 risk score, that we can provide real-time 
uh, feedback that you can create business logic around. So if you're, uh, depending on your risk tolerance, you can say if, if the score comes back as high risk, let me either stop a transaction or a conversion from happening or stop a click from going through or let me not bid on a, a specific ad or an impression. We can do all those things in five to 10 milliseconds. So it, it all happens very quickly. Wow, okay. So, Todd, over the past decade or so, what kinds of changes have you seen in the amount of fraud, the type of fraud that's taking place online? Well, I mean, coming from, you know, more of a traditional affiliate perspective, a lot of the fraud has always been around either as lead fraud, you know, submitting invalid uh, fake leads or recycled leads, or, as, as David said, more of this kind of cookie stuffing or force clicking, uh, which skews the attribution away from the affiliate that should have been credited. And of course, this now expands across all marketing channels. Um, if I'm a lead gen advertiser, I'm not just relying on affiliates to drive conversions. So it could go against my paid search or, or my email campaigns. So the fraud, though, has now expanded out to the impression. So it's not just about the conversion anymore. You are seeing clicks that are fraudulent and now even impressions, and it's across all media. There's not really a, a clean, pure marketing channel anymore. And it's not that um, the publishers are necessarily the ones committing the fraud, um, like we would think of an affiliate where potentially um, a fake lead is being submitted or a click. Um, but it's, it's just these botnets out there that are doing that to inflate um, media costs and spend. So it's, it's, it's kind of a whack-a-mole thing. It's never going to go away. And I think when a marketer pulls out a dollar and says, I want to spend this on this media buy, they expect integrity, right? They don't, they don't think that, you know, what, what, how many pennies out of this dollar am I literally just throwing away? And so that's why we really feel like Forensic is such a great fit because marketers rely on our data to give them insights into what they've spent and how they should adjust their budgets with forecasting tools going forward. And you've got to have a way of eliminating all that fraudulent data from it, being able to sift out, you know, the good from the bad. Okay. So besides the acquisition of Forensic, what sets Impact Radius apart from other digital marketing platforms? I think that um, you know we really do a really good job of integrations with third parties. We do really great cost importing. Um, I think our tracking, uh, both cross device as well as cross channel, it has a really high integrity rate. We really focus on the accuracy of tracking. And then probably the biggest differentiator I see is just the, the flexibility of our data and reporting. Um, I think a lot of these systems are one size fits all, or maybe you know. They have a couple versions of it, but every advertiser has different KPIs that are important to their business. So two seemingly identical businesses could use our platform, but the KPIs that they march to are completely different, and they can evolve over time or quarter to quarter, year to year. And so you need the flexibility to be able to capture the, those data points, uh, a real broad set of data points, so that when a question comes up about a media spend or about uh, attribution or about planning, the answer is already there. Um, if you don't have those KPIs and data points that are relevant to your business, and then they're identified as missing, and you fix that, you only have it from the point of fixing it usually going forward. So um, I think those are some of the, the primary things that we really focus on is, is getting good data in the hands of our, our customers. OK. What do you guys see as the future of the digital marketing world? I'll let David start. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I think there's, there's real power in platforms. So, you know, the idea of, of running your business on a singular platform is, is really interesting. Uh, you know, it was part of the reason we, we were excited about merging was, uh, you know, there, there's some other companies out there solving the fraud problem, and certainly we can provide value in, in that, but the, the idea of having a system of record that's managing and, and evaluating all different channels, online and offline channels, um, you know, I think CMOs are really looking for solutions that allow them to live in, in one platform and, 
and can kind of manage uh, all all their spend and, and understand their their uh, their media buys and, and that sort of thing. So I, I think uh, for for us that that's really interesting and, and forward thinking. Um, so I would you know yeah okay. any thoughts there? That's similar to what, the way I see it. I mean, obviously, our vision at Impact Radius is to be more of a hub where we are the, uh, the tool that does the main data capture, and we can enable you to buy media directly through any third party you want. You can work with any third party tool, bid management tool or whatever, or an agency. But the real key is that you've got this single system, um, and you're not relying on every company or every tool you use to provide data at each channel level, but then you're trying to get analysts to pull together and you really don't have huh, aligned data. You know, our systems are counting uh, impressions and clicks and conversions differently. Uh, they're seeing consumer profiles and device profiles differently. And so you get kind of fuzzy data and then you're trying to put it all together and make sense of it. I think that takes a lot of you know, lack of confidence. I don't really know the answer. I just kind of have a, a vague picture. People want the exact data that they can get it. So I think that that's where I see the future for Impact Radius. That's our goal. Okay. So if someone watching wants to try out the platform, what's the next step? Well, they should they can go to our website and we have a lot of contact information. They can reach out and a salesperson will talk to them about their needs. I mean, we do offer, Impact Radius offers um, you know, four products. So we have the, the forensic product, which is, helps you, you know, work with um, ad fraud and conversion scoring. So lead scoring, uh, so fraud kind of across the whole spectrum of, of, the, of the funnel. We have a tag management solution. We have the media manager and attribution solution that we've kind of been mainly talking about today. And we have our partner manager, which is a, a leading uh, affiliate tracking platform. So you know, you may have more than one need, and so we like to kind of talk to you about what you're interested in, what you're doing, how you're doing it, to really understand, you know, what, what solutions we should be talking to you about. Okay, so that's impactradius.com? Yep. Okay. And what do they see if they go to forensic.com? Uh, it's the same. So, you know, we're, we're keeping the forensic brands. You can still stock, uh, talk to, you know, fraud experts. We, we still offer free trials for folks who... Uh, are interested to see how much fraud they may have within their traffic. You know, kind of flip flip the switch, take a look, have a data scientist walk you through your data, and uh, it's forensic.com, uh, forensic with the Q, at the end. Okay, awesome. Thanks a lot, guys. It's been great talking to you and finding out more about where you're going and the growth. Congratulations and thanks for the discussion. Thanks, thanks Heather. Heather.